Well, good morning, and welcome to the Eugene Snyder Field. <laughs> we are uh, a little beside ourselves today. Uh, if you are noticing that you have a different voice talking, that is because uh, Andy Stone is up at Ancilla uh, with his girls' team getting ready to have a game. Uh, this is Phil Dean coming to you. Uh, we have basically a relatively brand new crew today. Uh, we have Liz from RTC down at the uh, down on the camera, and uh, the few moments of silence that you heard was uh, because I was concentrating on talking and uh, forgot to unmute the uh, speakers. Uh, we also have uh, new to the Argus TV. Uh, uh, channel of uh, broadcasters we have Zach Schaefer helping me out today uh, Amy Stone and and Bill Mills is up in uh, South Bend uh, supporting the, the boys team up there um, so uh, we are we are your uh, new crew for today and I'm going to apologize right up front normally I don't do a lot of talking because uh, everybody that's watched us for quite a while uh, Andy's a pretty good talker so uh, um, this is going to be all new to to me. And then, like I said, with Zach, he's uh, come aboard helping us with volleyball games. But he's uh, accepted the, the, the help to uh, broadcast today's soccer game. Um, We're going to be, we just finished up with the JV game. And uh, right now the Lady Dragons and the Lady Tigers are out on the fields doing their warm-ups. So we're going to put the... Mike's back on mute for a few minutes and get things uh, wrapped up for the production.
All right, and we're back here at uh, Eugene Snyder Field. Again, this is uh, Phil Dean. Normally, I'm on the computer only, um, but uh, today we have a lot of things going on and a lot of people missing, so you're going to hear a lot more of my voice and also uh, Zach Schaefer uh, will be doing uh, probably most of the commentating. Um, but the... Uh, uh, the girls are, both Lady Dragons and Lady Tigers are starting to finish up their their practices and get off the field and get ready to get things started. We have a minute and 20 seconds left before the start of the game. Um, so I will pass you off to Zach um, and uh, we'll get things started here. Hey, good morning, Phil. Like I said, beautiful day, good weather, can't complain. Uh, 65 degrees right now out there and Argus coming into the game, uh, five and one on the season. And Warsaw coming in at 4-2-1. and one. But we know Warsaw, uh, in the past, very, very strong teams. Uh, Argus will certainly have their work cut out for them today. Our, uh, the Warsaw program, just year after year, uh, they play a very difficult schedule. A lot of big schools on their schedule. Um, so nothing to take away from the two losses there that Warsaw has. They're, they're a very good team. They're, it's going to be a tough matchup today. I know Argus were battling with a lot of injuries right now. We're not going to see the same roster that we would normally see at full strength. We'll get into those, I'm sure, as the game unfolds, but we're missing some players to year-long injuries. We've got some short-term injuries that have put some players out of this game. So I think what we hear, uh, uh, Morgan Dunlap is out for a twisted ankle. Yeah, here she's out for an ankle. Um, we might have Vanderwill on limited minutes. Um, limited minutes for hamstrings. We've got a couple other girls that are out with season-long injuries, so we'll have a little bit of a unusual lineup, I'm sure, out there to get this game going. Uh, but after the 5-2 opening loss to Plymouth to start the year, the Lady Dragons have rallied all five straight with a couple shutouts in there. Um, against Kankakee Valley, they were able to, it's a big school over there west uh, on State Road 10, straight west. They were able to win that one 1-0 earlier in the year. And fresh off the Argus Invitational win, the girls uh, went on to win in PKs over yes. Mount Vernon. Uh, Alyssa Poisel probably had the game of her life. I don't know. I, I think we lost track of how many saves that she ended up having there. Well, that's a good confidence boost early in the year for a younger goalkeeper. Uh, be hopefully a nice little springboard for her going through the rest of the season. So it looks like our teams are getting the last words from their coaches. We should be lining up having the anthem and the starting lineups here very shortly. Again, if you are listening to this from your home or from wherever you're at, um, I know I, I said it earlier, but I think I had the, the mics muted, but uh, you're missing out on some of the, uh, the, the best special that I think the uh, Argus concession stand has had with the biscuits and gravy. Um, I know everybody up here in the press box has uh, had at least one, one round of it, if not uh, going back for a second. <laughs> I know as I was down on the sidewalk earlier, I actually saw a family of three for Warsaw come in. They said... They have good concessions here, and they're mm -hmm. all excited about the biscuits and gravy, so I was sure to pass that message on downstairs. And yes. It's almost like we, you know, when we go over to Kankakee Valley, the second you get out of your car, you can smell whatever they're grilling, and it don't matter what right. they're grilling, you're heading straight there to get whatever that's, it's on the grill. I did hear from downstairs, I believe the next Invitational coming up, we will have a pulled pork mac and cheese oh, going on oh, a special, oh, so I think we will have... We'll have that coming here. And Again, the press box is all chuckling because we all know that we're going to go down here and get it get it right away. <laughs> all right, both teams are starting to come across the field, and we will be getting ready for the national anthem and then the uh, starting lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask that you please rise. Gentlemen, kindly remove your caps as we honor America with our national anthem.
And now, for your starting lineups. First, for the Warsaw Tigers, number one, Jasmine Ochoa. Number three, Carly Hastings. Number six, Carissa Kuntz. Number 11, Abby Steffenmeyer. Number 12, Tess Brelsman. Number 17, Audrey Grimm. Number 18, Gracie Scholl. Number 25, Amanda West. Number 27, Riley Burns. Number 31, Jordan Love. And number 36, Zoe Bergen. And now, for your Argus Dragons. Number two, Hannah Trump. Number three, Parker Boffman. Number six, Lauren McGoughlin. Number nine, Sydney Shepard. Number 11, Lauren Hampton. Number 13, Emma Dunlap. Number 14, Peyton Betts. Number 16, Allison Zom. Number 19, Lizzie Edmonds. Number 20, Madeline Vanderweel. And number 70, Alyssa Poisel. All right. Well, that was your starting lineups. Now the teams are getting ready to uh, take each end of their field, come together, and do their last little their last uh, little pep rally before the uh, game gets started here. If you guys are just joining us, the one thing that you will notice is that the uh, uh, coach Stone has had to go with a different starting lineup today uh, due to injuries. I think he's got. Uh, Four, at least four, yep. out on out on uh, the DL list right now. Um, so that's going to definitely play into the strategy of, of the game of who to who to take the place, and that means that the younger players are just going to have to step up and and play a little harder today. Uh, notice for Warsaw coach John Hoover over there. I thought the name sounded awfully familiar. He was an assistant girls coach at Grace College. As I looked across the field, I was surprised not to see the same coach I'm used to seeing for Warsaw. Uh, looks like Hoover has taken over the program here. Again, he had years of assisting the, the Grace College, College girls uh, soccer program. We used to take the Argus girls over for summer training camps, and he was one of the coaches that would oftentimes work with our group when we were there in the summer. So no stranger to Warsaw in that area, but it looks like he's going to take over the girls program now. And again, it looks like another solid group for the Lady Tigers. About to get this one underway. 40 minutes on the clock. Isaac Smith gave us a call, by the way, on the starting lineups. Thank you, Isaac. We'll have to see early on how we handle the lack of Dunlap out there with her leadership. I know she's kind of moved back to a more holding midfielder position this year to try to anchor the, the middle of the field. Vanderwill is out there right now. Again, we'll see if she's got full time today or if she's going to be limited on minutes. I know she's been nursing nursing that right leg for the last few games, um, having it wrapped up, and then after the game having having ice packs put on it. And so I know it's been hurting her for quite a while. Lauren McLaughlin up on the ball. It's one of the new names for me, even being around the Argus community here in the school. Um, I believe this is her first year as a starting freshman, I'm being told here. She's listed as a defender, but we can see already she's at the center forward position, so already we're kind of seeing the probably adjustments in the lineup that we had to make. And looks like we're going to have the offside flag up here. It's being recognized by the center oh, official. Got to kind of get re uh, readjusted here with a lot of new names in the varsity lineup. Only been out of the program here a couple years, but a lot of young kids already uh, mixed in. Here we got several freshmen and sophomores that have got varsity minutes, especially here it looks like with the adjusted lineup today with the injuries. We're going to have some younger kids out on the field. 
That was a nice pass there by uh, uh, the younger. Emma Dunlap, yep. Just say Dunlap, you'll get one. <laughs> Warsaw usually does a very good job in their possession game here a couple times. They got called off sides already. Uh, looking to attack up the gut early, it looks like. But Warsaw, usually known to be very spread out offensively, definitely use the whole width of the field. Times it, it just gets a little frustrating defensively. You feel like they've got 13, 14 girls on the field. They just move the ball so well. They're, they're well spread out. They use all the all the field when they have possession of the ball. We'll see if that again is uh, any different here with Coach John Hoover. But Warsaw's got the uh, early possession again, looking to attack in a very straight line. They're going to probably be the faster team on the field today. You know, we're playing a 4A. Warsaw School here, so they got a very athletic group. It's a little harder than the volleyball game, picking out the numbers when you're looking across yes. across the field. And there's Poizel getting her hands on the ball for the first time. We were talking earlier that this is her first season of kind of uh, manning the goalpost back there. As Phil had mentioned, had a, a big game last Saturday. I was unable, unable to be here, but I did follow along with some of that on the broadcast. You had mentioned that you're uh, having, you know, a lot of new names and new faces out there. I know when, when my kids were going through, you kind of memorized each girl has its own personality. And you can tell which girl was who just by the way that they set their ponytail. By the way they set the ponytail, by the way they run. You can always kind of pick them out there a little bit. Got Burns coming down the right side, looking to cross it in. Looks like it actually might have hit the pole. Got the pole post there a little bit, right? And she's looking to pull that ball back to the six. Ball still in the Warsaw third, attacking third. And there is one of the anchors for us in the back with Lauren Hampton, the senior defender. She's probably going to be pretty important back there with Betts. I imagine they're going to have a lot of action here this afternoon. There's McLaughlin finding space along the left side. She's going to have a left foot crack. It was deflected, oh, and, it's and it's goal. We're going to watch that one again. I believe there might have been on the shot maybe a deflection off of Hastings there at the right back and threw the goalkeeper off. But we'll see on the replay here. McLaughlin finding some space and just using her speed to her advantage. And it definitely was redirected. And But that's why you get the uh, benefit of the doubt sometimes. You put the ball towards the goal, good things are going to happen for you. And just like that, the Lady Dragons are on the board early in the fourth minute of play. Fifth minute of play, apologize. <laughs> so that was the freshman McLaughlin with the goal for the Lady Dragons. We have that as her third on the season. I'm going to guess with three goals on the year, she probably plays a blended role from time to time up and down the field. Warsaw with the header attempt is going to be picked up by Poizel. Well, I would think that should serve as a good confidence boost for the Lady Dragons getting on the getting on the board earlier. I think last year uh, this game was a little lopsided, and I'm not sure we had a lot of cracks at goal, so hopefully that will help with the mindset for the rest of the game here. Warsaw does find the through ball. No offside flag on this play. Poizel with the good save. The shot coming in by Grimm will be a goal kick. And that's Warsaw's best opportunity early on here in the game, and Poizel gets herself in good position to make the save. We'll have to see how deep Warsaw goes on their bench, but one advantage they'll have today is definitely having uh, more opportunities of substitutions with the limited roster that we're going to deal with today. Yeah, it's the first I looked over there and wow. They got a full field and yet their their uh, their bench is full too. <laughs> yeah, Trump applying pressure on the far side and now Boffman will pick up the pressure. Warsaw's definitely looking to send runners up the middle. 
they're looking for the through ball opportunity. The Lady Dragons line is very high and Hampton looking to turn it outside with Grimm putting pressure on and be a throw in for the Lady Tigers down by the corner flag. I guess that was Hampton up with Burns there. Grimm's got the throw in here for Warsaw. Getting used to those numbers being 60 yards away from us. Burleson in the corner. Trying to find space. Able to get the cross through the 18, but ball not quite cleared all the way. And that time it's out of play by Shepard cleared out of the back third. We have to be careful a little bit uh, with the clearing. Warsaw can really keep the pressure on. If we're not able to find feet out of the back third, they're going to bring it right back down to us, and it's going to be a, a task for the back third today to try to find that midfield. Looks like we had a handball against Argus. Koontz is after for Warsaw, heading down to the end line, trying to find space to send the cross. Looks like she's going to have the drop back here to number 18, Schoel. Probably looking to find that back post, but unable to do so. Poizel comes out, makes the play. Looks like we've got a couple subs lined up over there for Argus. Warsaw is going to settle in here a little bit, uh, get their passing game going. I, I feel like they really pressed forward quite a bit more than I would have expected early on here. Got Edmonds, got to find a little space up to Dunlap. Again, Morgan Dunlap is out today, but younger sister Emma is going to find space for a shot. That's going to find the goalkeeper, Okoa. Good space, good idea by Dunlap, just unable to get the power needed on that shot, but we'll take that. Stefan Meyer finds a hole. Her shot's low, but Poizel again with Another a good, good save. Another good stop. Well, we can definitely tell that must be Warsaw's game plan here early on, is looking for that through ball and just going to try to kill us on speed a little bit. and picks it up in the midfield and applies the pressure defensively. You can see the outside mitts for Warsaw. Like I was saying earlier, they definitely utilize the touch line. So far, I don't think we Warsaw has pushed the ball out there as much, but they definitely will use touch line to touch line. In for the Dragons, number seven, Ariana Allen, and number 12, Ariana Pets. So a couple Ariana's coming in here. we got Ariana Allen and Ariana Pets coming in for the Lady Dragons. Again, another... Another freshman and then a junior as well coming in to the game. I was wondering how many how many push offs they were gonna allow her allow allow her to do there. Warsaw opts for the fairly quick restart and they will get a corner kick out of it. Looks like Grimm is going to the corner. Audrey Grimm, the junior midfielder. They take the quick short corner. She's gonna get it back. Offside flag is up that that it's well done by the Lady Dragons to step out. That's a very common offside call. I mean, you try to play that short corner right back to the corner if the player's not on the goal post or do a good job getting off the goal post. Catch them offside, and the Dragons will take over possession. Riley Burns taking it up the left side. Looking to turn the corner, able to do so. Played across the six, but headed clear. Oh. Unfortunately, the header fell to the feet of Carissa Kuntz, who was able to take a quick touch and find the side netting from 30 yards out. And Warsaw ties it up. 
Ties it up one to one. Initially, it was I believe it was uh, Shepard's header out of the box. It was a good header, just unfortunate to find the feet of Coons weren't able to get pressure on in time. And got the twelfth minute on the goal there by Coons. Bring it back to one to one and kind of start over here with twenty eight minutes to go in the first half. Warsaw right back on, applying the pressure. Hampton over to pursue defensively in the box. Looks like it's going to be a corner again for the Lady, Ti Lady Tigers. They opted for the short corner last time. Looks like they've got somebody different going over there this time. Probably be a ball into the box. This is Kuntz that's going to be on the ball. Warsaw's lined up like they're looking to drop one in right around the six yard box there. From here, it looks like they got the size advantage height-wise, height that's for sure. But they do go with the short corner to the left back coming up to support. She tries to turn the corner. We got good pressure on defensively, and Warsaw unable to make anything out of that attempt. Get the ball back quickly and wide open in the middle. Header in for goal number two for Warsaw. Back four was looking for the offside flag, but it, it stays down in the goal. Abby Steffensmeyer. Abby Steffensmeyer with the head ball goal. Well, the back four was asking for it. We don't have the best angle up here in the booth to tell. Uh, linesman was in position there, didn't see anything. And Warsaw able to get the header, get up two to one here. A lot of goals early on. Arch just got to settle back in, try to find some possession, slow down this Warsaw attack. Pets able to take it away on the right midfield position on the far side. Warsaw quick to get it back with some combination play to feet. Now looking along that left corner flag now. Parker Boffman was in a battle there and he draws the foul. See the opportunities, we can slow the game down a little bit. And Be a challenge for us today. Just keep good defensive shape, making sure we're keeping track of the through ball runners at the back four position. But the more pressure we apply at the midfield, the harder that ball will be. And with Dunlap applying pressure on the near side, Warsaw again doing a good job. Just one two touches, getting rid of the ball. One side of the field to the far side. There's that outside mid play. It looks like it maybe was going to be offside, and the flag is up. Sydney Miller's uh, here at the game watching it, but also is listening to us. Give me a hard time because I'm not doing, not doing as much talking. <laughs> as I talked to her a little bit ago. I told her you were going to be here and to send you a nice, nice text uh, compliment, <laughs> but apparently that has not happened yet. <laughs> yeah, she's almost you know one of my kids. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair game. <laughs> she said that would be hard to do. Hampton in a battle here. Ooh, Poisel ooh. coming out. Well done by Poisel to come out and get a body on it. It was Burns. Looking to break in behind the defense. It's good timing by Poison. A tough tackle here on the near side. No foul given, but we are going to check for injury. We're going to have a quick injury timeout. That one there, when she landed, she twisted pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty solidly contact to the ground. It's the uh, senior defender, Amanda West. We will have to check out of the game. We'll stop the clock. Uh, referee blew the whistle, so she will need to sub out of the game. 
should have a trio of subs coming in here. Megan DeBost will come in for the Tigers. Checking in for West. Warsaw still just looking straight line attack. There's a uh, Koontz finding an opening. And they are playing very, very direct and able to get it through. It looks like to the captain, Steffensmeyer again from Koontz. Looks like Carly Miller's coming in and McLaughlin, you say back McLaughlin. in? McLaughlin. McLaughlin, yep. McLaughlin, number 22, Carly Miller. So Warsaw just very direct here in the last 10, 15 minutes finding openings in the back four of the Dragon defense and it was a well played ball by Koontz to Steffenmeyer. Scroll down here in the corner, gets a deflection, it'll be a throw in for the Lady Tigers. <laughs> that ball has left the entire complex. Yeah that, yeah, that left the complex and we have no ball girls or ball boys. So they're waiting for that ball to come back into the complex. Should be Scholl on the near side throwing in and Shepard able to get something on it out to Vanderweel on the near side. Looking for Edmonds, but it's picked off by Koontz and Burns back on the attack. That's a good looking shot. Poisa looked like she got a hand on it, able to deflect it off the post and gather it back up. Warsaw definitely putting the pressure on here as of late. Have to try to find opportunities to possess offensively. This is a way to get very fatigued very quickly when you're chasing so much defensively, but Warsaw does and you give them credit. They do a great job moving the ball. Here's the width on the right mid that we talked about earlier with Skoll. They just spread the field out. They pass very well and these are the moments here. We're looking for combinations. Do a good job there from Edmonds to Vanderweel. Over to Carly Miller. Definitely had a fair share of freshmen and sophomores getting some minutes early on in this contest. on the far side taken away by the Lady Dragons played out of play it'll be a Warsaw throw in yeah, some of them with the hair hanging over the number I don't have a chance <laughs> especially on the Warsaw side I have to try to pick them out a little later Admin's going to apply the 1v1 defending on the near side Warsaw keeps the ball moving back to their center back Looking to open it up, play across. Good ball movement, two passes, switch of the field, and looking to attack on the far side. Cuts able to break up that pass, and Warsaw throw in again. Looks like Argus got a couple subs waiting for the opportunity to come in. Trump and looks like right here might be the moment they will be coming in. We'll have Hannah Trump the sophomore forward and it looks like Madison Barkas yes Madison Barkas the junior midfielder you can tell it's her just by the way she's holding her left arm from a uh, injury last uh, last Saturday I All haven't right. I haven't marked off on the roster but looking at it we've definitely said a lot of these names we've already gone very deep uh, on the varsity roster early on in the half a lot of opportunities for Everybody play. Poisel picks that one up. We'll try to find feet. Ed 
Edmonds. Good one touch. It's Miller over there, right? Horse all able to regain possession over to Hastings on the near side. Good step by Sydney Shepard to take possession, looking to attack the space. The Shoal able to recover and back to Hastings. Riley Burns has certainly been active for Warsaw early on. Number 27 up here applying the pressure right now as that ball cross the line all the way. Warsaw will have a sub. We'll have a moment. Looks like it's going to be uh, Scholl stepping out of the game. Into the Tigers, number 23, Kirsten Parker. And into the game for the Lady Tigers, number 23, Kirsten Parker, the sophomore midfielder. You can see a lot of hands on the hips right now from the Lady Dragons. Just to chase a little bit defensively here in the last 10, 15 minutes. And then we're going to have to be disciplined and pick our moments and do a good job uh, playing our, our areas and making sure we're putting pressure on where we need to, just staying in good defensive shape. But right now, Warsaw just moving the ball very well, doing what they do. And that ball shielded out of play. Well done there, and that'll be a goal kick. Actually, a foul. We're going to take the forearm into the back. Be a kick for the Lady Dragons. Betts, another veteran back there for us is Peyton Betts, the senior defender, playing kind of the right back, center back area. Also, there are still a few words of biscuit and gravy remaining. Just four dollars at the concession stand. And root beer floats. Right. Root beer floats and biscuits and gravy. We got fresh chocolate chip cookies. In for the Tigers, number five, Brielle Warsaw is going to have Brielle Fellman, the Parker junior Boffman midfielder, coming in. The Dragons bring back Parker Boffman and Emma Dunlap. 3 1 the score. 18 minutes to go here in the first half. Vanderweel plays his goal kick out. Boffman is applying the pressure defensively. Now Trump. Warsaw starting to settle in a little bit, it looks like, offensively. and Doing what they do well, and that's moving the ball around, using the whole field. Several times they've played from one side to the middle, quickly turned to the opposite side. Again, just gets that defense really chasing and rotating. Looking for openings on the weak side, but Edmonds does a great job there of dispossessing Warsaw, but quickly taking back over. And it's Fellman, who just checked into the game on the ball, plays out wide to Parker. Unable to get to it in time, it'll be Lady Dragon's throw in on the near side. Do it again, looks like Emma Dunlap is going to take this throw. Men out wide. Ball knocked down. Boffman's got the ball. Pressure from Burrell's men on her back. Looking for Vanderweel. One touch pass is taken and Warsaw quickly switching the fields. Likely coming over here to Parker on the near side. They're looking for her. It's Hastings now looking for Parker. Pressure from Dunlap, and we are going to have a foul. Looks like the referees are deciding if it was out of bounds first. Nope, looks like the Probably center official foul. is choosing the foul on Dunlap. This will be a Warsaw free kick. Center back's coming over to take this one. See if she's got the leg to drop it in around the PK spot coming from that area. Makes me wonder if that's where they're looking to go. Instead, the ball finds the right side here. And it is Zom defensively. 
I may have missed her coming in at one point. Don't think I got her name announced. I don't think she's been out yet. Oh, she <clears> started. Okay, well, there you go. That might be why. I, I, I lost track of the starters yet. as well. So we definitely have covered the roster uh, pretty well here early on. Her, Edmonds, Boffman, or uh, Vanderweel. I don't think it, they've been out yet. The Tigers, letting Mr. Smith do the starters there. I must not have uh, been paying attention as he was talking very well. But. Just as we say that, then uh, uh, Edmonds is on her way out. <laughs> Played out to Vanderweel, one touch towards the middle. It's a dangerous area, but the goalkeeper, Ochoa, was able to come out and corral that one before Boffman able to make a play on it. Trump applying pressure and Grimm able to come up with it for Warsaw. Looking to come all the way to the far side or the near side to Parker, but knocked down. Warsaw's definitely got some balanced scoring on the season with Kuntz having four goals coming into the match. Steffensmeyer with five, Grimm with six. So we've got several players that can do it for him offensively, and I think we've just about seen all those names early on here in this game. Kind of the big three for him, but very balanced. Isaac's here telling me two by Steffensmeyer so far. One by Kuntz, so that'll add to their total. It'll be five on the year for Kuntz then, and seven for Steffensmeyer. But again, those two of the three today have found the net already. And right on cue, there's Grimm. Grimm was the other one out of the three, and that's going to be her seventh on the season. We talked about the big three scores for for Warsaw, and all three now have found the net. It's a lot harder to uh, defend three offensive scores than one. That's for sure. They got good balance offensively up there, and brings the score to four to one with 13 minutes to go in the first half. Argus was able to get on the board first early on, but it's been Warsaw since then with. Four goals of their own. Lady Tigers looking to possess out of their back third near their corner flag. Able to do so so far, but now the ball looks like deflected out of play. It will be Warsaw throw in. to make the head ball attempt pick up by Hastings at the back out here to Parker on the near side back to Hastings again the pressure being applied by Barkas now and Argus able to dispossess Warsaw that's a good switch of the field by Sidney Shepard good awareness and Trump in the, in the right spot to pick that up Parker Boffman trying to go up to the middle but Warsaw able to poke it away Now we see McLaughlin back to that right back position. So a utility player all over the field. She started up near the center forward position, it looked like, and now picked up the first goal for the Lady Dragons. Now back at the right back. Maybe to just help us settle in a little bit back there. It's Parker. Either that or it looks like uh, she's pretty evenly matched in speed. Speed, yeah. That's going to be. We knew that would be a challenge coming in with the more athletic Warsaw team. It's a big school, so we expect that out of out of Warsaw. We expect a, a lot of size, a lot of speed. Pharrell's men on the ball. That ball's just going to be played out, but Warsaw first to it. So we got a battle near the midfield as Lady Dragons able to come with it come up with it looking for a little one-two combination 
unable to find Pete Warsaw. Now both teams kind of turning it over pretty quickly to each other. So it's back and forth here in the midfield. Parker's calling for it on this near side. Warsaw not seeing it right now. Kept it in, I believe. Now throw in here for Warsaw. Offside flag is up. We're waiting for the center official to see it, and there it is. The off, offside on the far side of the field. Offside. Before most of that play developed. <laughs> you had kids that played uh, Warsaw. If I remember right, this wasn't usually a 10 a.m. noon game, right? I think it was. No, it was more like it was of more a, in the afternoon. More right? of an afternoon evening game. Being the Notre Dame fan, I remember every year I used to look at that one, look at the Notre Dame football schedule, and always see if we're going to make it home in time. But don't have to worry about that today as they're off. Not that I don't mind an 11:30 game because you're done and it's yeah, still it early enough to get stuff day, right? done during the day. That's right. Nice combination there from Zom and Dunlap. A lot of young players on the field. It's just a freshman sophomore combination. Morse all able to make the turn and Parker's been waiting a long time over here for a ball to be dropped into her area. Looks like she might finally get it here and makes the turn. across around the 18. She is going to find feet in the one-touch shot by Steffensmeyer. Not much pace on it. Not much for Poizel to do there. Starting to get a little bit more of a breeze. Still feels good, but though. Yes, it's, can't complain. I believe this is Allen on the ball here. Yeah, because during soccer season, you don't get very many days like this. It's either hot, raining, or cold. Snowing. Snowing. Yeah, we mentioned that about the volleyball game. One benefit, it's always 70 degrees and yep. nice in there, right? But it's always 72. or Lights are always on. Got three subs for Argus standing over there. We'll see if they ever get the chance to come into the game. It's partially due to the fact that Warsaw just not play the ball out of bounds very often. There's going to be a foul here. He's kind of pushing the back. It'll be a Warsaw free kick in the midfield line. Looks like the center back coming up to take this free kick again. Looking for the quick restart, but not very well met at the foot there and picked up by Shepard, who looks forward to Allen and Barkas, both in the area, but Ochoa comes out and Smothers it up around the PK spot. I got the wind fighting the microphone a little bit. Must just be in the right spot over there. That it's kind of blowing to the to the southeast. <coughs> yeah, it'd be worse all throw. And since they put the sub up, now we can get both teams in on the substitutions. Number 17, Audrey Grimm coming back in for the Tigers. Ariana Pitts, Lizzie Edmonds, and Madeline, uh, Madeline Vanderweel will come in for the Lady Dragons. We can put that window back in if we need to to, to break that up. Stephens Meyer with the ball at the center mid position. Looking out wide. That's a great run on the far side. Can't quite get the number there. Uh, looking to find Elizabeth Stone. They cleared out by the Lady Dragons. Warsaw finding space here in the midfield area now. Starting to ping it around a bit. It's going to be Fellman, but good pressure by Zom to break it up. And Long 
the left midfield side again. That ball does make it all the way across. Warsaw's Parker is going to have what looked like a layback attempt. Don't know if she was going for the shot of the layback, but regardless, finds the 10 yard area, but the shot's well over the bar. Do our best here to get out uh, just a three goal deficit or better if we can. We've got five minutes and 20 seconds to go till halftime. Isaac saying three points for that field goal, right? I had a lot of those when I played, I can tell you that. If that's only the way it worked. Yep. Betts takes the goal kick out, and it is Grimm that brings it down. And Warsaw looking for combination play in the midfield area. Outside to Hastings, the right back working her way up into the attack. Parker still on the touchline out wide, and it'll be Stone looking to gather. But Zom plays it out of the back looking for Barkus. Grimm able to pick it up in the center mid for Warsaw, and back to the far side they go. Betts playing it more like a sweep there, able to get to it. Gets it out of danger, it'll be a throw in for Warsaw. Grimm into Stone, gets it back on the 1-2 combination. Back to Stone again. That's where got to play sharp defensively. If you're the Lady Dragons, don't get caught chasing too much. Play good 1v1 one, one one defending. As Dunlap's doing so here, putting a shoulder in there with Parker, who's cross sails outside the 18, and Warsaw able to pick it back up. And a deep shot. I believe it's Grimm with the shot, and that ball is well, Steffensmeyer with the shot. Goal kick for Argus. Warsaw uh, has been very dominant here, especially in the last 30 minutes of the half, and showing that passing game that they do have and slowing down the play. Again, we talked about their schedule earlier. They did beat Plymouth earlier in the year 5-3 to three in a conference matchup for them and also played Northwood 1-2-0. Nothing. Most recently here had a win at Goshen 5-2, to two, who's usually always a, a good team from year to year, and a 1-0 loss to Homestead which I believe is down in the Indianapolis area. not 100% sure of that, but that's always a strong program. I know I see them in the tournament a lot, so I'm sure that was a, a great matchup there. They did drop the most recent game one to nothing before coming here to Argus. And Steffens Meyer plays it out wide. Plays will able to come out, get her hands on the ball before Stone is able to get any attempt on goal. Poizel's been busy. But she's been active, done a good job. Two minutes remaining. Edmonds will come to Dunlap. He looks for the one touch back to Vanderweel in the middle. Good battle with Fellman and Zom near midfield. Warsaw throw in on the far side, looking for the quick throw. And they're up and quickly into the attack. They've got opportunity here, but the ball, not sure if she was looking to go outside or over to the near side here, but right down the middle. And Poise will come out and pick it up with a minute, just about a minute to go here in the first half. Allen on the far side, putting pressure on. Looks like hands are in the back, and there is a foul. 
This might be one of those rare times where the I think we might be leading in fouls in this game. <laughs> Got the larger, larger uh, team in Warsaw, but we've definitely bodied up physically and not bad fouls. Aggressive fouls, trying to get in and win balls. Nothing wrong with that. What do we got, Isaac? Is it five to three? Five to three on the fouls. Good battle here on the near side with Hampton and Parker. As we're winding down here, Warsaw looking to get one more attempt. Parker out wide is going to try the one-touch cross. Again, back towards the 18. Grimm. Wow, and Steffensmeyer does get the opportunity, but Poizel comes up big right before the half with another save. Brings us to the half, four to one. It looks like Warsaw is going to have 12 shots on goal. Argus is two shots. As we mentioned, five to three fouls. Uh, Argus with five. And Warsaw does have two corner kicks on the match. Four one at the half. We've seen plenty of work from Grimm, Steffensmeyer. Up front. I think we're going to have a 10-minute break here, Phil. What do you got? With that, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a take a slight break. Um, you'll see a commercial, and then uh, we'll come back to some silence for a while while the camera's out on the field, while we're getting things uh, arranged up here. And uh, you are watching Argus TV on RTC TV 4. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play.
And we are back here at the Eugene Snyder Field, where the, uh, at this time, the Warsaw Lady Tigers are uh, beating the uh, uh, Argus Lady Dragons four to one. You are watching Argus TV on RTC TV four. Um, if you have not, uh, if you've not heard yet, or if you have people that are asking, you can uh, download the RTC TV four app on um, off of the uh, your app stores, whether it's an iPhone or whether it's a uh, Android base. Um, go into the app, um, hit the explore button, and you can watch the the games live um, as they are being played. Um, and then after that game uh, is is done live, then it is put into the loop on the Argus TV channel, uh, where they do run uh, past games and and different events uh, that are happening in Argus 24/7. Um, they do not have a a program time on when games are coming out yet. They just kind of put them in the loop, and so you may catch a game uh, at seven o'clock in the morning or or eleven o'clock at night. Um, if you are wanting to watch today's game later on, it is available on pay-per-view. Uh, it's $4.99 per month or $49.99 uh, for the whole year. Um, you can also go on to rtctv4.com, and it's the, uh, the same setup there where you can go into the Argus TV channel and see all the events that are going on, or you can uh, link into the actual live event. Um, the girls are now just getting back out on the field. We are getting ready to start the second half. Uh, so I will turn it back over to Zach and get things started. Yeah, we're talking at halftime here. It's going to be a uphill challenge in the second half for the Lady Dragons, but I think we're really going to focus on this half, just playing sharp defensively, uh, doing our assignments defensively. Odds are Warsaw is going to outpossess. So can we do what we need to do defensively, put pressure where it needs to be, um, and just take advantage of the opportunities that we have offensively when we get them like we did early on with McLaughlin. Uh, her goal coming early on, five minutes in. She's back up top again and applying pressure. Warsaw is going to find Grimm. On the near side, got the appears to have the captain's armband on, I believe. Uh, one of the three main goal scorers that we talked about for the Lady Tigers, each of which have found the net today. It's going to be a little challenge uh, just to be disciplined for the Lady Dragons and try to find good play here in this half, good combination passing offensively just make Warsaw earn anything that they might get. So throw in's going to head to the midfield. Burrellsman looking for the center forward, but picked up by the Dragons, played back out to McLaughlin. Warsaw quick back on the ball. <laughs> There's the good pressure that we're looking for. Make Warsaw play the ball quickly, make them play back. If they're comfortable doing that, they're going to swing it around here to the near side, trying to get caught up on some new numbers here for Warsaw. Jordan Love in the left back position. Grimm looks like she's made her way out to the left mid. This Poisel able to come out and corral that cross. Her punt is up looking for Dunlap. She's able to pick it up. McLaughlin making a run through the middle. She's going to have a touch, and Love able to Apply the pressure defensively, gets a deflection. I believe we have a new, new goalkeeper in back there for Warsaw. We'll have to see if we can, based on the roster, the other one on the roster is Brielle Harrison. We'll see if we can get a number if she gets turned there. Grimm's pass through the middle. The flag is up and offside will be called. Steffensmeyer a couple steps too far out in front.
The Dragons will get the ball back in play here with Betts in the bright blue boots. And good step by Vanderweel. Breaks up the play. Warsaw back on the ball quickly. Now to Grimm on the near side to the center mid. And there's that switch of the field that Warsaw does so well. A good defending on the far side, shielding by Shepard. We're going to see, though, the referee might be calling obstruction. I'm going to try to get clarification based on his hand, but just as I was saying, good shield. You don't, you don't see the obstruction call very often. I'm trying to see if he's going to signal indirect kick, so he was calling obstruction. Warsaw with a quick touch, but the referee didn't like the spot of the ball, I guess. So we're going to reset it. So it is indirect. One of the few indirect fouls in soccer is the obstruction call where uh, Shepard was keeping the player away from the ball while she was out of range of reaching the ball. So that's the obstruction call. Yeah, not not called a lot of times really, but it was there Grimm on the near side. Referee probably felt that she obstructed a, a play which could have led to a shot, a little more likely to make that call. As Betts is going to apply pressure on Grimm on the near side. Grimm able to win the battle. Ball played back and picked up by Vanderweel. Lizzie Edmonds in a battle with Burrellsman. And it's Kuntz on the ball to the far side, and Warsaw will play it to the right back who joins the attack. Do a good job of getting those outside backs involved when the opportunity is there. Burrellsman to Grimm. She turns, takes a crack at it, and that shot's going to sail over the goal. Kick for the Lady Dragons, Peyton Betts back on the ball. Warsaw takes possession on the far side. Plays towards the right corner flag. Ball played back. Just looking to possess and move the ball around. The midfield area right now. Nice slip ball by Burns. We'll find Grimm, whose cross attempt is deflected by Vanderwill out of play for a corner kick for the Lady Tigers. This will be their first corner attempt of the half. And I think it's DeBois, the center back. That is coming in to take the corner. It looks like it'll be an in-swinger. Based on where Warsaw's at, looking to put this ball right on the goalkeeper area. That ball off the outside of the foot, comes out more towards the PK area and clear it out. Jordan Love on the ball. Good step there by Betts to step and win and gathered by Trump. McLaughlin's pass is deflected out of play. We'll have a throw in and a substitution. Bella Stoltz coming in for the Lady Dragons. We'll just take Isaac's word on all the subs. I'm letting him do the work and just repeating after him. Trump's throw in. Looking for Dunlap. You know, but I'm just looking up there right now. I, I'm calling Trump to Dunlap to the McLaughlin, and we're talking sophomore to freshman to freshman up front. So, so we got a young group out there. With again injuries to Morgan Dunlap and veteran players Amani Gonzalez and Taylor Dowdle both out of play for the year. Warsaw on the quick counter attack. Grimm able to find space. Was on side, but that shot is over. And again, Isaac gives me the field goal. I've had a few of them here lately, and that is certainly one that she will want back. She has made her presence felt all day today. Girls are continuing to battle. They're playing well. They're in the game mentally. They're staying sharp defensively, putting pressure on, making more salt earn the opportunities that they get. And it's good to see out of the young, fairly young squad we have out on the field.
Poizel's punt is at the midfield line, one touch by Warsaw. And got to try to find feet out of the back here. And get difficult as the pressure's been on you much of the day to, to relax and try to find the opportunity to pass. But Betts doing a better job there, battling with possession in the dribble. And we will have another substitute. And it's going to be number seven, another freshman. Ariana Allen coming in for Hannah Trump, who will take a breather. And Allen, as soon as she comes in, will put the pressure on defensively. McLaughlin on the ball now. And Forced turnover there by Warsaw's Dunlap plays it out to McLaughlin, gets it back, opts to let it run all the way across to Stoltz, whose shot was deflected. Warsaw able to gather it up before it gets out the end line. This could be Allen with space in the center of the field. Finds him a Dunlap, trying to turn around the defender unable to do so and Grimm plays it out to Jordan Love the left back Allen with the defensive touch out of play Grimm with a quick throw in Betts is going to battle Burns on the near side looking for drop past to Vanderwill and finds her He looks to take her on the dribble, but Burns able to sweep it up, and I believe we're going to have a corner kick here. Nope. We're gonna Both referees kind of looked at each other. Goal kick for the Lady Dragons, and looks like should have a substitution if we see it. Matty Vindewheels Goal kick will find the feet of Love, who plays to Grimm, to Belsmer. <laughs> Verelsman, sorry. I knew I said that wrong once it, once it came out. Morsel's kind of back on that three girls standing on the back four of Argus and able to get three right there, right on cue. And that's Steffensmeyer. I didn't see where the pass came from, Isaac. I apologize. But we know we can give the credit to Steffens Meyer. She did have the through ball coming back from the center mid area. And Warsaw again able to find a seam in the back four of the Lady Dragons. And Steffens Meyer is going to sub out of the game. And number 19, Elizabeth Stone, Stone is going to check in. Shell Allmeyer for the Lady Dragons. I believe that's her first appearance of the contest. Some of the Lady Dragons, I think she plays JV and due to limited halves, can't necessarily have them in every half, but does get in here early in the second half and will take over in the left back position. Let's see, I think she uh, she ended up playing the whole game on the JV side. She'll get one varsity half then today. And I'm sure she'll have her fair share of minutes here. Uh, hopefully we'll provide some support and fresh legs there at the back four position. Warsaw's <coughs> attempt to switch the field in the back four is turned over, and we will have another substitution for the Lady Dragons. Like Emma Dunlap is going to check out. And Cagney Hoffman, I believe her first appearance as well, mm -hmm. will check in at the, I assume, the center forward position. We'll kind of see where she works herself to here in a minute. The foul on Warsaw. Lizzie Edmonds draws the foul. And good opportunity here for Argus. This is one of our first set pieces in the offensive third. We'll see what we're able to do. It looks like McLaughlin is setting the ball up. We've sent bodies in around the six. See if we're able to drop this ball in. And that is well done. Right on, right where you'd want it to be, but nobody able to get a body on the ball. And now Warsaw is going to have the counterattack as they're going to have numbers here. And 
one of the players was offside, came back, but didn't interfere with the play, so flag stays down. Madeline Vanderweel will pick it up on the near side, but her attempt to McLaughlin sails wide out of bounds. Those are the opportunities we're looking for in the half, though. We get those set pieces, see if we can make the best of them. There's a good ball put in by McLaughlin. Warsaw just moving the ball well on the ground. and Grimm on the near side with a fake to the middle, and then she comes down near touchline, and it was Stone offside, offside by a step or two. Dragons doing a good job of slowing down the attack of Warsaw. Make them earn it. 5-1 to one here with 26 to go in the second half. Love plays the ball to Burrellsman. Over to Grimm. Again looking for Burns along the left-hand side. Betts and Burns have had a good battle here in the second half on this side. And as Betts is trying to shield, we're going to have a call on Warsaw. Burns in the back. A lot of bees right there. Peyton's going to put the ball into play. Burrell's men picking it up as Edmonds applies the pressure. Better idea there by Argus. Try to slow it down, make some combination passes. You know, sometimes you'd rather see mistakes and trying to do the right things and just get the ball off your foot and drive it up the field and let Warsaw pick it up. Try to try to make a dribble move. Try to make some passes. So Warsaw has another pass uh, a couple times here lately in the back four trying to switch the fields but just too much and playing it out of bounds to be a throw in for the Lady Dragons on the far side. It's going to be Hoffman on the ball now and I think again we'll have another throw. Warsaw looks to send it long. Bet's able to pick it up and play it out. We'll have a couple substitutions for the Lady Tigers. As Kuntz is making her way off the field, as well as Burrell's men. 28, Macy Wayne. Can Isaac, can you help me with the other one? The other sub for Warsaw. We had 28, and who? Number five, thank you, Brielle Fellman. Came into the game. Hoffman crowds the goal kick and her pass is intercepted. Morsal looking to attack directly right up the middle with a couple combination passes. And that is Burns and battling again with Betts. Inside the 18, Peyton's done a nice job being in position and playing physical, leaning in, winning the ball when she can. Allen's throw finds McLaughlin, and she's going to have a little space attacking the near side, looking for a cross to Hoffman. That ball not exactly cleared the way Warsaw would have liked, and Maddie Vanderwill able to pick it up, and now she's finding some space, looking for a shot. Not the right idea, looked like the last touch, just not able to get it out in front as much as she would like. and Got caught with the ball a little bit below her body. Miss Harrison able to make the save. Isaac, if you can confirm that that's number, or you can see that goalkeeper the best you can and see if you have any other name on your roster that maybe isn't with the same as what I'm going with. I see now that it was double zero. That was the first time I caught her number, and we don't have a double zero on our roster, so we'll go with Harrison since she's the only other one listed. Here a few times recently, Lady Dragons have at least had some opportunities with the ball, finding uh, space around the middle of the goal box. Allen's going to put the pressure on Grimm on the near side. Grimm just very composed, 
great turn, good ball down the middle to Stone. And plays the ball out wide. And the shot attempt saved by Poizel. Warsaw looking for the rebound shot, but unable to do so. Good save by Poizel. She's done a good job back there making the saves that she can make. Audrey Grimm, the junior midfield, takes the throw in, deflected out, and we'll have another throw in, but first should have a couple subs if if recognized. Linesman's trying to get the attention, but if you get them get them next time. Fellman. This ball back. Here Coach Stone trying to get the back four of Argus to, to step up, clear out, make that field a little smaller for Warsaw. Caught him offside several times. And that ball does cross the line out of out of bounds, it looks like. And we'll have multiple subs. Bonnie Hampton makes her first appearance for the Lady Tigers. And back in for the Lady Dragons is going to be Hannah Trump and Emma Dunlap. Bonnie Hampton, the freshman midfielder for the Lady Tigers. I believe that's the first time we've seen her out on the field this afternoon. Second time, Isaac tells me. All right, my stat man to the right. He'll correct me. Stat man slash clock operator slash PA. So the wind has picked up here a little bit. I know it's getting into our microphones at certain angles here coming through the window. We sit on the east side of the field, so we're kind of right into it here. It's Hoffman and McLaughlin looking to combine up in the offensive attack for the Lady Dragons. Vanderwill picks it up. Stays after and keeps the ball alive. Good hustle play by Vanderwill. As she's played a lot of minutes today. It looks like she's been healthy thus far. Dunlap plays back to Vanderwill, back up to Hoffman one touch and good combination there by the Lady Dragons switching to the field that's good stuff and Hannah Trump might have a chance at it left foot just unable to hit it cleanly and get a good look at it but good ball movement there by the Lady Dragons those are what the opportunities we're looking for five uh, passes in that attack good ball movement out of the young team Peyton Betts the senior bringing it up the right near side to the freshman McLaughlin who's now applying the pressure to DeBoas and her pass is out of bounds. Good pressure there. So here in the last five, six minutes, the Dragons have probably matched their opportunities offensively that we had for much of the first half. Good to see the battle. Trump on the far side looking for support. Does find Shepard who looks to go back to her. Warsaw looking for the counterattack. Allmeyer on the far side to defend. Puts the pressure on and will win a throw in. Just about 19 minutes to play. Warsaw 5, Argus 1. Takes a throw and has room in the middle of the field to possess. Looks to turn. Love makes her way out to the near side here, but it's not going to make it to her here on the near side. And a miss clear by Warsaw is almost picked up by. Cagney Hoffman in a dangerous area, but now Hannah Trump's putting the pressure on her shot. Low and on the ground, but wide of the goal. Parker Boffman makes her way back onto the field, the senior. Another experienced player up front for Argus. But a better job lately here of creating opportunities. 
Put a little pressure on the defensive side for Warsaw. Dunlap battles. She might have space for a shot. Again, just not able to hit it clean. We've had opportunities. Warsaw puts a little pressure on, and we just have been unable to hit one with pace from distance. The idea and the opportunities have been there. one of those games coming in we know how difficult of a challenge it'll be to to get the win but still things that can be picked up uh, a lot of defensive work that can be done in this type of game and um, opportunities to grow as a young squad play some of these better teams like this it's going to prepare you for the future and there's a push in the back a couple times uh, but the second foul second part of the contact is called and McLaughlin will be on the ball this will be our second opportunity from about 30 yards out. The wind is kind of blowing back and to the right for the Lady Dragons. McLaughlin looks like that was a shot attempt, but wide of the goal as Warsaw's sub in number 15, Mackenzie Kohler, and number 23, the sophomore, Kirsten Parker. She is the other goalkeeper listed, but given that she's on the field, I think we're going to say with some confidence that Harrison. It's back there for Warsaw. Maybe Fellman on the ball. The midfield position for Warsaw plays out wide and expect Warsaw just to look for opportunities to move the ball a little bit here. But Hannah Trump able to break it up. Keeps the pressure on down in the far corner. She does win it. She's along the end line. Lays the ball back looking for Dunlap. Mr. DeBoas who steps out to win it and clear for Warsaw. Maddie Vanderweel turns with the right foot looking outside towards Allen. But she opts to shoot and just about gets that thing to sail enough. But the save by Harrison. She had a couple options there. Chose the shot. And that was one of our better attempts from distance. A good game to work on that 1v1 defending. Let's say it looks like uh, Lizzie Edmonds and Allie Zom getting ready to, to check in for the Dragons there. Looks a couple sophomores again. Again, we've been very balanced with our our team as far as grade levels go across across the board. The discount concession sales are underway. And now it looks like Edmonds and Zom will make their way onto the field. Oh, Stolt, sorry. Again, that's why we got Mr. Smith over here with the binoculars. He's Dunlap trying to pick out Edmonds and space out on the outside for the substitute Hampton along the left hand side looking for the cross Peyton Betts again in good position able to break it up but Hampton stays after it she will find a Tiger on the far side not able to quite clear it all the way in Warsaw's last attempt by Fellman is out of bounds for a goal kick. Dunlap looks to bring it down. The head ball back to McLaughlin. And 
Warsaw picks up in the back four as they go inside out. It'll be Hampton back to Love. Good shield and win by Stone who turns and finds Parker busting up the right side. Almeyer applying the pressure does a good job of disrupting the play and making things difficult for Parker and it's Hampton that will eventually make the clearance. That was a great defensive play on the far side by Almeyer to uh, disrupt the opportunity from Parker. Still have some work cut out for us as Warsaw's got the ball being moved across the midfield looking outside to Jordan Love. They've done that several times today. They just do a great job of finding seams and playing the ball to space allowing their teammates to run onto the ball and it's a big battle here by Hampton as she continues to work her way towards goal through a couple, a pair of Dragons defenders. It'll be Edmonds on the ball, able to find Allen, who makes a move to the inside, and Love picks it up back the other way. Almeyer again in good position. Dragons slow it down, try to find a little possession here. It'll be Almeyer on the far side. Now double teamed, looking for some help. Warsaw able to dispossess and ball along the end line, finds a cross. And the shot attempt by Stone was saved again by Poizel. She's put herself in good position to make saves today. So one touch by Stone was on goal. It's Warsaw's third shot on goal this half. Artists set two of their own. As McLaughlin finds space and speed up the middle. Gave herself an opportunity. It was, I believe, Love that was chasing down and did a good job of shielding McLaughlin off of the ball and Harrison able to pick it up for Warsaw. Good attempt there again by the freshman. Applying some pressure to the back four of Warsaw. Not a bad idea for the Lady Dragons there. Possession, bringing the ball back. It's going to be Hampton in a battle. Now on the near side with another Hampton. we got Hampton on Hampton. But Lawrence, a tough physical player there in the back four for Argus. She's not afraid to put her shoulder in and try to make a play and also take the contact at the same time. And it looks like Hampton's going to get called. Warsaw's Hampton here will get called for the offside. Offside. On the near side. Just under 10 to play. Still Warsaw 5. Argus 1. Lady Dragons have battled well this half. So we knew it was going to be a, a challenge today. And when Warsaw out possesses, it's easy to get tired. And when you get tired, it's a lot easier to make defensive mistakes. But I've been impressed with the organization of the Lady Dragons and the battle and the fight that they've had didn't make Warsaw earn anything they're going to get. Is it Stone to the right back here, Hastings. If we do watch this film, this is a, Warsaw is a good model of how that spacing can look offensively and moving the ball around with pace. J.C. Near comes in for Warsaw along with Kate DeLo. Shepard and Hoffman back in for the Lady Dragons. As we start to wind down, Phil, do we know some things that we have coming up on the Actually, we RTC do. schedule? I wrote them down here somewhere. On Tuesday, this Tuesday, the... Uh, Lady Dragons Volleyball will be over at Culver, uh, and the Culver crew will be broadcasting that one. Um, so if you uh, do watch the uh, uh, volleyball games, um, basically go into the app or on the website and uh, go into the Culver TV, and you will be able to, uh, to watch that game live on Tuesday night. And then on Wednesday night, uh, right back here for... Uh, 
boys varsity versus Plymouth. Um, that'll probably be a good game since they're a big rival. Um, that's on Wednesday night. And then again on Thursday night, uh, we'll be broadcasting the uh, Lady Dragons volleyball uh, there in the gymnasium at the uh, comfortable 72 degrees with yeah. no rain, no snow. Over. <laughs> Um, and they'll be playing against North Miami. And then on Saturday, uh, we have the, uh, the Boys Invitational. Um, I don't know yet how many games we will be broadcasting of that. I know with the Girls Invitational, um, we ended up just broadcasting the, uh, um, the final game when the girls made it into the finals. Um, so we will have more word on that as, as that comes along. Uh, but that's what we got going on this, uh, this upcoming week here on Argus TV at RTCV, RTC TV 4. <laughs> right, so we got just under seven to play now. Flag is up again. Another offside against offside. Warsaw. If we can find the Lady Dragon schedule here. Not sure I've got mine. Let's see if we pull that up here. As far as where they're playing at? Yeah, we got the looks like the Academy is coming up next. It doesn't get any easier there, does it? Warsaw to Culver Academies. If the schedule that I'm looking at is accurate, I'm not looking at the school website right now. I'm showing next Thursday they play the Academy. Yes, Culver Academy, so that'll be, again, a tough game. Then at Eastbrook, I'm not familiar with, with that. That might be a new opponent to the schedule uh, recently. But, like I said, these are the types of games, the challenges. They'll, they'll build you up and help you as we move forward. These aren't the types of teams, uh, size-wise, that we'll be seeing in the tournament. But it's good to see them in the regular season and compete against it at the high level. I'm sure Coach Stone will find things to take away from today and, and build on. Well, definitely in the second half, the uh, the Lady Dragons have been a little more aggressive on the uh, offense side of it. Yes. Um, it seemed like there at the end of the first half that the uh, tiredness was starting to, uh, to get onto them and they were going back and playing more defense and not so much on the offense. And uh, Vanderweel, I think she's been in for most of the game, if not all the game. Yeah, I was a little unsure if she was going to be <coughs> full-time minute-wise today or not. I had information that she may not be, but wasn't 100% sure of that. It looks like she's done well so far. Hopefully you can make it the next four minutes and get out of here healthy as you said they don't play again until next Thursday so we'll have some time hopefully to get some injuries resolved by the time they head over to the academies I'm trying to see if that's my phone that's yeah it was my phone a little, <laughs> little too close to the computer I have a throw in on the far side for the Lady Dragon see if we can make something he happen here in the last four minutes be a nice little confidence booster to, to end this game by getting one in, but Warsaw going to try to do the same with a counterattack on the near side. That's Hampton unable to pick it up cleanly, so she had to come back to it, and we'll find Parker, who's now worked her way more towards the center forward position for the Lady Tigers. Trump able to intercept, looking for McLaughlin now, and finds her. The freshman-sophomore combo up the near side. Trump in a battle does a well, jo uh, well done job there to dispossess Warsaw. She's still after it. Edmonds trying to get to the far side it looked like now opts to take the left foot shot. And again just unable to get much pace on it. It'll be easy work for Harrison in the goal. Her punt will come to the near side. And Trump's back at it again. She's done a good job here as of late battling for possession as that pass gets away from McLaughlin out of bounds to Warsaw. 
JC Near with the throw in. Vanderweel is going to pursue it with Parker on her back. Flex to go outside and wins the throw in. Well done by Vanderweel to make the turn and off the foot of Parker. Lauren Hampton going to come in further up the field than we are used to seeing her. Looks like at the center mid position here, the last couple minutes of play, unless she works her way back. We'll see where she goes. It's going to be Edmonds taking possession through the middle of a pair of Warsaw defenders. Finds Dunlap with space, trying to find some help, but she's able to turn, looks for a ball to the far side but picked off by Warsaw and the ball will be sent out of bounds. Trump gonna take the throw in. Lady Dragons looking to get one here in the last couple minutes. Continuing the battle all the way through. Bonnie Hampton's pass out of bounds here on the near side. Betts will take the throw in and she will pass it off to Maddie Vanderweel who will take the throw in. Battle for Edmonds comes out. Betts trying to get a little bit of space from Vanderweel. That play kind of showed up right on top of her and again deflection. So we're down to the final minute here at Eugene Snyder Field. It's been a beautiful afternoon for soccer. Argus was able to get on the board early to take the lead, but it's been all Warsaw since then with five unanswered goals. Looks like the flag will be up again. As Stone was caught in the offside position. That's 10 on the day for the Lady Tigers. So we're down to the last 10 seconds of this game. Betts is going to send the free kick down. It'll be picked up by Warsaw. It's the last seconds tick off the clock here. And that is going to do it here as the Warsaw Lady Tigers are going to win this game 5 to 1. And that will move the Lady Dragons I believe to 5 and 2 on the season and Warsaw to 5 2 and 1. As the only second half goal get my paper sorted out here was by number 11 Abby Steffensmeyer the assist from Akoa the senior midfielder. And Stephens Meyer had the hat trick on the day with three goals of her own. And uh, goals also coming from Kuntz and Grimm. Again, those are the three we talked about earlier. Lead the team in scoring very balanced, about five to seven goals for all three of them on the year. So that balanced attack was quite the chore for us today and we're all able to get the 5-1 victory. I think that'll about wrap it up, that Phil, unless you got something here. else. We are, uh, again, going to be, uh, uh, now not our, not Argus TV, but the uh, the girls' volleyball will be over at Culver, and that game will be uh, uh, broadcasted to the Culver team. And then we will be back here at the Eugene Snyder Field on Wednesday night for the boys' varsity versus Plymouth. And then, again, um, at the, uh, we'll be in the, uh, Phil Waybright Gymnasium on Thursday for the uh, volleyball game versus North Miami. And then again back here at Eugene Snyder Field uh, for the, on Saturday for the Boys Invitational. So we hope everybody enjoyed their, uh, enjoyed the game this morning and hopefully everybody will be able to enjoy the rest of their afternoon. Uh, this is Phil Dean and Zach Schaefer uh, saying everybody have a good day. <laughs>